So now we get into nomenclature. Nomenclature is just a systematic method of naming things. So the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry is the organization that came up with the, the system of rules for naming things. And this was an international organization. And so everybody decided this is how we're going to name some things, name these compounds. These rules occasionally need to be updated, so they do change occasionally as new things are discovered. Um, in the early days of chemistry, when people discovered a new compound, they would just give it a name. It's like, okay, well, that one's going to be Doug, and this is Susie, right? Not, not quite like that, but a lot like naming children. You just come up with something. It reminds you of so-and-so, and so you name it that. The alcohol came from wood, and so you call it wood alcohol. And so there were these unique names for these compounds, but there was no rhyme or reason, there was no order or pattern to them. And what some people called one thing, other people called something else, and it was very confusing. And so that's why we came up with this IUPAC system of nomenclature. We do use the common names somewhat still today but we also need to know what the IUPAC names are. So the rules, um, you can love them, you can hate them. Um, what I love about organic chemistry nomenclature is that it is so much more consistent than the inorganic nomenclature. In general chemistry, you had a set of rules for binary molecular compounds with only nonmetals, and you got to use prefixes. Then you had a set of rules for ionic compounds, and some of the metals needed Roman numerals and some of them didn't, and we had these special names for the polyatomic ions. And then you had rules for acids, and there were two kinds of acids. Okay, there were different sets of rules. The organic nomenclature is much more uniform and consistent. It's like English pronunciation is a mess, okay? But you go to Spanish pronunciation, and they pronounce things much more consistently. It's easier. So I personally think that organic nomenclature is easier than what you've already learned. But you are going to have to keep up with it and work on it as you go along. So we have, we've talked about two kinds of alkanes, straight-chain alkanes and branched alkanes. And when we have branched alkanes, the branch, oops, sorry, pointing on the wrong section of the screen. Um, we, we call the, the things hanging onto it a, a substituent. A substituent is an atom or a group of atoms attached to the chain or the ring of carbon atoms. And some of these are alkyl groups. So substituent is the more general name. And one way you can think of this is that it's a little bit like a charm bracelet. So here you have a string of carbon atoms. That's like a bracelet with links in the chain. And then you may have things dangling off. Those are the substituents. So we base the name on the longest chain and then we name the things that are attached to the chain. What do we mean by an alkyl group? An alkyl group is related to an alkane. We do a lot with prefixes and suffixes. Okay, so an alkane would be something like, um, let's see, where should I put this? There's not a lot of room on here. would be something like this. That's an alkane, right? It's a carbon with single bonds to hydrogens. The carbon has four bonds. If we're going to attach that to something else, we're going to have to remove one of the hydrogens so that can bond to something else. You take an alkane and you remove one hydrogen atom and you have an alkyl group. So it's an alkane that's missing a hydrogen 
Now it's missing one bond, and so it can attach on to something else. These are the names of the straight chains, the continuous chain alkenes. The first four are common names, and they were so common that people didn't even try to make us use something else. So if there's one carbon, it's methane. Two carbons is ethane. Three is propane and four is butane. You're going to have to memorize those. But they all end in ane. Okay? So this is how I remember it. And I, I still to this day say this in my head. Oh, I'm writing with the eraser. It doesn't work so well. Whoops. Mom eats pickled bananas. I'm thinking mom must be pregnant. Who would eat pickled bananas? Who would even think to pickle a banana? I don't know if you can pickle a banana. Mom eats pickled banana bananas. Methane, ethane, propane, butane. There, there is no sense to that. You just have to come up with a way to remember it. Methane is an alkane with one carbon. Ethane has two, propane has three, butane has four. After that, we get into those Greek numerical prefixes that you used in, in general chemistry. So, pent, pentane means five. Hexane, hex means six. This is an alkane with six hydrogens. So hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. And it, it, there are names for the rest of them too, but we rarely go past 10 in this class. Any questions? So let's look at those alkyl groups. So an alkyl group is where you took an alkane and you took off a hydrogen. So if this was methane, it would have a hydrogen over here. Be carbon bonded to four hydrogens, right? But it doesn't have that. But it was methane. We removed a hydrogen, but we we're going to use this part of the systematic name, meth, and we're going to change the ending. So it's a little bit like, you know, conventionally a woman gets married, she changes her last name. She keeps her first name. So meth is like the first name, and ill is the last name. She was methane, now she's methyl. So that's a methyl group. An ethyl group comes from ethane. Ethane has two carbons. Propane gives us propyl. Butane gives us butyl. We get pentyl, hexyl, etc. You see the pattern in that? If you can see the patterns, it's pretty easy. If you can't see the patterns, it's not easy at all. But it's worth persisting until you see the patterns. So that's how we name those alkyl groups. Now rules. There's a lot of rules. We'll go over the rules, and then we'll apply the rules, and hopefully they'll make more sense. The first thing we do is we identify the longest chain. We're looking for the longest continuous carbon chain. And that's what we're going to base the name on. And this is where recognizing conformational isomers is important. Because you can either redraw it or visualize, but you have to imagine straightening this thing out. Imagine it being like a bracelet, and you're going to pick up two ends of the actual bracelet and stretch them out, and then you'll see all the things that are dangling off. Otherwise, if you just drop it on the table, it's just a jumbled up mess. It's hard to see. So we're going to find the longest continuous carbon chain, and that's the parent chain. Okay, so the, the basic name is going to come from that. That's, you know, if there's five carbons in that chain, it's pentane, some variety or derivative of pentane. The second step is we're going to number those carbon atoms, and we're going to number them in a way that we give the lowest possible numbers to the substituents that are on them. Right now we're just talking about alkyl groups. 
if there's only one substituent, then you name it and you locate it by which carbon atom in the parent chain it's on. And if this isn't making any sense, that's okay. Hopefully it'll come clear when we do examples. It's a little bit like learning how to play hearts or gin or, or poker or something. They can tell you all the rules up front, but it doesn't make any sense until you start to see the game being played. If you have two or more of the same kind of alkyl group, then you're going to indicate how many of each of them you have with one of those Greek numerical prefixes. So if you have two methyl groups, you'll say dimethyl, meaning there are two methyl groups, or tetraethyl, meaning there are four ethyl groups on there. And then we also indicate the position of those using numbers of the parent chain separated by commas. We separate numbers from words by hyphens. We separate numbers from each other using commas. Isn't this fun? It's the first day of class. Yeah, it's the first day of class. When we have two alkyl groups on the same carbon, we're going to number them separately and list their names in alphabetical order. I'm pretty sure this is a typographical error. I think that this shouldn't be a chain on the same carbon atom. And then here's a summary of punctuation rules. Numbers are separated from each other by commas. Numbers are set separated from letters by hyphens. And you don't put a hyphen or a space between the last substituent and the name of the parent alkene. Now that's all just crystal clear, isn't it? Not so much. Let's do some examples. So let's name these guys. So let's look at A. And the first thing we have to do is we have to find the longest chain. So it's tempting to just go... Oh, I forgot. Okay, here we go. It's tempting to just go across here. What? Technical issues. There we go. To go across there and say one, two, three, four, five, six. But that's not the longest chain, is it? Because if we if we came down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But actually, if we started over here and came up around this way, it's even longer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have to look at these carefully and puzzle them out sometimes. And some of them are written, drawn in a way to intentionally trick you. It's true. So I'm going to erase those lines. on. There we go. So the first thing is we need to find the longest chain. So we did that. We're doing this um, from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbons in a chain. What's the name of an alkane with eight carbons? Octane. Octane. Okay, so that's the last part of the name we kind of end up writing these backwards. That's the base of the name, and then we're going to tell what's attached to it. So this is our, our chain, and what's attached to it? We've got this guy and this guy. Are those the same? Yeah, they're both CH3s, right? CH3 is CH4 that's had a hydrogen taken off. CH4 is the smallest alkane, it's methane. So these are methyl groups. So we have methyl groups. Actually, let's leave a little space. Methyl groups. How many methyl groups? Two. Two. So we're going to need dimethyl. We need to tell where those methyl groups are attached on this octane chain.
actually. When you first start doing this, you're going to make a lot of messes. And uh, I'm making a mess right here. I'm a little rusty, I think. Dimethyl octane. That's going to get jammed right up to the base name. No space, no comma, no hyphen. Dimethyl octane. Now we have to say where those are. So we're going to number the chain. We could start at either end, but we want to do it so that the numbers are the smallest possible. So if we start here, we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's going to give us, this first one is on a 3, and the second one's on a 6. The 3 and the 6 get separated by a comma. The 6 gets separated from the letter D with a hyphen. 3, 6, dimethyl octane. What if we numbered it the other way? 1, 2, 3, oops, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Would it change? No. Sometimes it happens like that. They're the same. But sometimes it's different. And so you're going for the lowest numbers. Because each of these compounds has one name. Okay? And the way we end up with one name is that we've decided that we're going to do this all in a certain way. So, you know, if you number your chain backwards, will someone else understand what you mean? Well, yeah, but it's kind of like baby talk. My second son, we were at a restaurant, and he, he was talking about the dollar biller. I, I can't remember what he was saying about the dollar biller, but he was going on and on about the dollar biller. The dollar biller was the cash register. Did we figure out what he meant? Yeah, but it was pretty silly. He also called his big, dough, big toe his fat toe. You know, so we understood what he meant, but it's not the proper name for that. So sometimes you will come up with a name that looks and sounds really good. And we can figure out what you mean, but it's baby talk. There's one best name. Okay, there is one IUPAC name for every compound. Now when things get really complicated, it kind of gets fun if you like that sort of thing because you get people arguing over which rule takes precedence over the other rule. It gets kind of complicated. We're not going to go that far. So let's, that's letter A. Let's look at letter B. <coughs> What's the longest chain in the structure for B? I'm seeing eight. Continuous chain. So if I if I go along here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can't drop down on the third one and carry it over and then back up? Nope. No, you can't connect carbons that aren't connected. Okay, so you that's a very good question. You can't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You can't do crazy stuff like that. So you go from one carbon to another carbon that is bonded to it, and there's no backtracking. So one longest chain. So our longest chain is right along here. Sometimes that happens. It's the one that's the horizontal row. But there's eight there. And so this is also an octane, but it's just a different octane. It's got different things on it in different places. So that's our chain. What do we have attached to the chain? Well, we've got this one, and this one, and this one, and that one. Those are like charms on the charm bracelet. What are those groups named? They're all the same, right? Those are methyl groups. So methyl octane. How many are there? There's four. Tetra methyl octane. Where are they? We have to number this. 
So if we number left to right, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We've got 1 on 3, 2 on 4, and 1 on 5. So I didn't leave myself much room. That would be 3, 4, 4, 5. Yes, those two fours are the same. But we need to let the person reading our name know that the four was the one with two methyls. Three, four, four. Three, four, four, five. Tetramethyl octane. What if we numbered it the other way? Let's uh, I'll go with green. If we number it the other way, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We would end up with four, five, five, six. So this would be four, comma, bad comma. Four, five, five, six. tetramethyl octane, which is the best name, the green one or the red one? We want the lowest numbers, the red one, the first one. So we're going to number the chain. You can choose either end to start at. We're going to number the chain so that when we put the uh, places where the constituents are, the substituents are, that they have the lowest numbers. We're just going for the lowest numbers, and then we'll all arrive at the same answer. Okay? You know, the, the green one, 4556 five, tetramethyl octane, is like calling the cash register a dollar biller. We know what you mean, but it's silly. Okay? It's not the proper name. So that's going one way, looking at a formula and writing the name. And then we can go the other way from the name, drawing formulas. So draw the condensed structural formula for 4,5-diethyl-3,4,5-trimethyl octane. Oh, wow. This is sounding fancy and complicated, isn't it? Well, look at the last word, the last part, octane. That tells us that the longest chain has eight carbons on it. Now there's, what, 10 people in the class plus me, so that's 11 people in the classroom today. We could probably draw this 11 different ways, okay? Which is what makes grading some of this stuff really challenging because People's brains work a little differently, and so they draw things differently. When you're given a structure and you have to write the name, you have to deal with what you were given. When you're writing the structure from the name, make it easy on yourself. Make that octane just a straight old chain and number it from left to right, like we read. So octane, we're going to go, let's get back to our blue um, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a lot of counting in organic chemistry. And just go ahead and count it because it's dumb to, to miss a problem just because you weren't willing to count it. So you got to get your finger or your pencil out and you got to count them because you can't just look at that and see, oh, that's eight. Eight and seven and nine all kind of look a lot the same. So octane. Put numbers on there. Um, let's see. So I'm going to number these from left to right. I'm going to write the numbers down here so that they're not in the way later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we look at the beginning part of the name. Four, five, diethyl. 
the 4 and the 5 means that there's something on the fourth carbon and the fifth carbon. Two ethyl groups, one on each. What's ethyl? Well, ethyl comes from ethane. Mom eats pickled bananas. It's the second one. Two carbons. So ethyl, that's an E. Ethyl is CH3, CH2, the line where it's going to stick onto something else. You can put these above, you can put them below. It's the same, they're just different conformations, just twisted around. Same exact molecule. So the two, the CH2 is the one that connects and the CH3 is attached to that. So here's CH2. I'm going to draw this one the other way just because I don't really have space for it over there. So I have 4,5-diethyl. This is carbon number 4. And this is carbon number 5. So 4 and 5 each have an ethyl group. And be careful when you draw those that you make sure the CH2 is the part that's bonded to the chain because carbon always has four bonds and so this this carbon doesn't have room for another bond. 4,5-diethyl, 3,4,5-trimethyl. What's methyl? Well, methyl comes from methane. Methyl is CH3 with a line where it's going to attach to something. You can't have methyl or ethyl or any of these alkyl groups by themselves. They're not going to be stable because the carbon doesn't have an octet. So methyl is CH3. We're going to have these attached on four, sorry, three, four, and five. So here's three, four, and five. There'll be a CH3 here and a CH3 there and a CH3 over here. Now this is kind of a mixed up formula, isn't it? It's not a condensed structural formula, but it's not a skeletal structural formula either. Because we've got hydrogens on some of them and not on the others. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the hydrogens. The guys on the ends are always going to end up with CH being CH3. Ones in the middle are often going to be CH2. So these guys are CH2s. Now, what about this guy here? This carbon right here. That's bonded to one, two, three carbons. Does it need a hydrogen to have four bonds? It does. So that's going to have a hydrogen. What about this guy? Is that guy bonded to hydrogen? He's got bonded to this carbon, and that carbon, and this one, and that one. <coughs> he has his octet, his four bonds, taken care of by bonding with other carbons. So he doesn't have a hydrogen. This guy over here, same situation. Bonded to four carbons, there's no room for hydrogens. So when we look at a condensed structural formula like this, these H's are bonded to the carbon before. These two H's are bonded to this carbon. This hydrogen is bonded to that carbon. These belong to this one. So you put the carbon first and the <coughs> hydrogens after, generally speaking. Any questions? Here's another exercise. Draw the skeletal structural formulas for and assign IUPAC names to all C5H12 alkane constitutional isomers. Wow, there's a bunch of words we just learned this afternoon. 
constitutional isomers. These aren't the conformations. These are actually where things are connected differently. Skeletal structural formula. So we're just going to draw the carbons. We're not going to worry about the hydrogens at all. C5. So we've got five carbons, and we're going to first see how many different combinations can we make. Well, obviously one of them is going to be a straight chain. So carbon, 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 carbon. Five carbons in a row. And then let's, so we, we strung five beads together. Now what else could we do? Well, we could pull one off the end and stick it in the middle somewhere. So there's the four. And we could take this guy on the end and we could stick it over here. What, what would happen if we stuck it on this one instead? Are those two the same or different? You could think of it as confirmations or just that it's reversed. We're looking at the other side of it. So if I'm standing here with my left hand up or if I turn around, you're just looking at a different side, right? The connections are the same. If we try to name those two things, we'll come up with the same name. So if you're not sure if two things are structural isomers or not, name them. If you name correctly, you'll come up with exactly the same name. Okay, so those guys aren't, aren't different. How could we make another one? Can we make another one? What if we took this guy off the end of this one and stuck it in the middle? Is that different? That's different. Those are the only three that you can make. Some people find this stuff to be just really hard to think about. And that doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means your brain works in a little different way than people who like this stuff. Some of us are really good at visualizing things, and other people are not. And so if you need to get a model kit out and play with it, or if you, know, if you can't afford a model kit, gumdrops and toothpicks. Okay, gumdrops and toothpicks or mini marshmallows and toothpicks, and you can kind of get the same effect of, okay, are these different, or am I just looking at the other side of it? Okay, it can be really helpful to have some manipulatives to work with. So these are the three different constitutional isomers. What are their names? What's the name of the first one? Longest carbon chain is how many carbons? Five, right? What's the prefix for five? Penta. So this is pentane. All the alkanes, single bonds, only carbon hydrogen, they're all going to end in ane. So that's pentane. The second one, the longest chain, has how many carbons? Four, right? So we say mom eats pickled bananas. Bananas is four. Bananas is butane. So this is butane, but it's butane with something hanging on it, right? It's got this group here. What's the name for an alkyl group with one carbon? It comes from methane, methyl. So this is methyl butane. And then we have to tell where is that attached. So we can number left to right or right to left, which is going to give the lowest number to that carbon starting from the right. So if we call this one, two, three, four, that's two methyl butane. Okay, this bottom one, how many carbons in the longest chain? Three, right? Mom eats pickled propane.
could also say mommy it's peanut butter but pickled bananas are funny so that's propane and we could choose we could choose this to be the long chain or this to be the long chain or this to be the long chain it's all going to end up being the same though so I'm going to call this the long chain and what do we have hanging on it a single carbon and a single carbon two methyl groups so that's di methyl and where are they it's on the number two carbon either end you start at you still end up with it being on the second there's two of them and so you need to put the number two twice two two dimethyl propane This is going to take some practice, right? It's going to take some practice. I think, yeah, we're, we'll stop there and we'll, we'll work on finishing off this chapter in lab on Wednesday.